Welcome to Papa Podcasts. I'm your host, Mr. P. Today's email and request comes from Manny from Florida, and he writes, Hi there, Mr. P. I just finished up on the gas law in chemistry. I don't think I understand this too well. Can you explain them to me when you can? Well, sure, Manny, and this goes to any other student studying the gas laws. What we're going to look at today is just a quick overview of the different equations that we're going to be looking at throughout this section of the chemistry unit. What I have here are Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's law and the equations that follow each one of them. I'm going to go into further detail in the next videos on each one of these different gas laws. So stay tuned for those videos. So what we have here is we have Boyle's law and Boyle's law looks at pressure and volume when the temperature remains constant. So the sets of units that we need are pressure and volume, initial, and one thing you're going to notice with all three of these equations is the first part represents the initial, I don't know if you'll be able to see it from there, and the second part of the equation represents the final, so whether it being the final pressure, final volume, final temperature, depending on which one of the laws that we're looking at. So we're looking at Boyle's law, and Boyle's law looks at pressure and volume when the temperature remains constant. So what we're looking at is we're ignoring temperature. We know the temperature is going to remain constant. What we're focusing on is pressure and volume. So if pressure was to increase, the volume is going to decrease. And this is what we call inversely proportional. Over on Charles' law, we look at the functions that are occurring between volume and temperature is division. And because they are, they are dividing as opposed to multiplying the pressure and volume for Boyle's law, we are dividing volume and temperature when the pressure remains constant. And so what we're doing here is we're ignoring pressure because we know that pressure is going to be constant in the following closed system. And so the volume, if the volume was going to increase, the temperature is also going to increase and do the opposite, which means that this is directly proportional. Now, Gay-Lussac's is very similar to the Charles Law, but the only difference is we're looking at pressure and temperature, and the volume is what remains constant. So, what we're looking at is, also, we're dividing the top two sets of units. And the one thing to focus on with these will be the math aspect, which I will continue um, towards the end of this, this video. What we're going to look at here is we need, we are going to need our initial pressure, uh, final pressure. Initial temperature, final temperature. And what we have here is, because that we are looking at division, again, if pressure increases, so we'll have the temperature, which means because they both will increase also at a similar rate, because they're both increasing, both increase, we're looking at directly proportionate. So notice Charles and Gay-Lussac's are directly proportionate, which means if one of these increases, so will the other. But with respect to Boyle's uh, law, since they are being multiplied together, if one increases, the other one is going to decrease. Hence, the inversely proportional, the inverse of what the other one's going to happen. So, if we combine all these together, notice here, in, in all these equations, except for Boyle's Law, notice how temperature is found here at, in the denominator of each one of these equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two sets of equations. So two sets of fractions. And because temperature is in the denominator, we're going to put temperature here in our denominator. Initial, final. Now, because volume is up in the numerator, Pressure is up in the numerator. Pressure and volume are, are being multiplied together. Well, if we multiply our initial pressure with our initial volume and divide it by the initial temperature, we're going to equal to the 
final pressure multiplied by our final volume divided by our final temperature, which in total now combining all three, one, two, three laws, we come up with something called the combined gas law. And that takes into account the fact that temperature, pressure, or volume will not be considered constant, but in fact, they will be changing. And that's what we call the combined gas law. And so when we're looking at calculations, we want to start off with our, our, our original equation and substitute into any one of these, the, 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 these terms. And keep in mind which one happens to be the unknown. And so if we're looking at one of these equations, the rule to keep in mind with, res with respect to math, when solving these math problems, remember the rule for cross multiplication. So whenever we bring temperature across the equal sign, we want to remove it from our denominator, it becomes part of the numerator of the opposite side of our equal sign. And what happens is here, we're dividing to, uh, the initial temperature here, we would end up multiplying the initial temperature over here if we were to move the um, whatever we have in our denominators to, uh, to the opposite side. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, stay tuned for, um, for specific videos on each one of these gas laws, including the ideal gas law. Thanks for watching.